Hello, and in this video, we're going to try to explain Merkle trees. You've probably heard of Merkle trees. They're all over the place. Everyone's talking about them. Uh, anybody in the cryptocurrency space has to bring up Merkle trees all the time. But do you know what they do? Well, we're going to explain to you. If you want to see more videos kind of explaining blockchain and cryptocurrency, um, subscribe. I'm trying hard to put out a new video every single day and jump right into it. So if you're kind of new to computer science or don't know, um, this is what we would call um, a tree. Um, oftentimes in computer science, you'll see this tree um, inverted, but I thought for this video, I would make it look more like a tree to make it kind of easier for my viewers to conceptualize it. And so we'll look at a couple features of these trees. So we've got leaves at the top. We've got nodes here. Those where the branches come together to form nodes. And at the very bottom, we have the root. You can see it looks like a tree. It, it's pretty. All right, so let's zoom in on a leaf. So here is a leaf. And we're going to see for the Merkle tree, a leaf is really, we've got ha a data, and then we hash that data. And if you remember with hashes, if you've experimented all with hashes, you'll see that, you know, you'll put um, data through a hash. And usually the user-friendly output is going to be um, a alphanumeric string. Uh, so that's what's going to happen here. So we have this um, chunk of data, and we're going to hash that. So we're going to get this alphanumeric string. It's going to be the hash. I'll go back, give you another view of the tree. So here we go. We've got um, the two leaves and then the node. And if you look, now I'm going to give note those, um, the data with letters. So we have data A and data B. So we hash each one of those. So we get two different hashes. And then we hash those together, right? So we've got the hash from data A, hash from data B, hash A, hash B. We're going to hash those together. Hopefully it's not too much hashing confuse you but basically we're going to hash the, the hashes together <laughs> okay one more look at the tree so you can keep it keep it visualized like this really helps you can visualize it so now we can see the two nodes join to form the root you probably heard of the merkle roots a lot well that this is going to be how the merkle root is formed so we have our hash a b and hash cd and we just hash those two hashes together to form a new hash. That would be the Merkle root in this example. And that would be our hash ABCD. And this is kind of like what the Merkle tree looks like. Granted, um, this is an extremely tiny Merkle tree. Um, other Merkle trees have, um, you know, thousands of leaves. Um, but I figured that graphic would be really hard to see on your screen. If I made mine tiny. Um, so... One cool thing with these Merkle trees is that if any of the chunks of data, even if like one bit in them changes, the entire Merkle root will change, which, you know, you kind of would expect that from hashes and especially as hashes of hashes, those changes would cascade through the tree. But why use a tree? Well, let's look at the alternative. The alternative would be we could actually get the hash from A, B, C, and D, and we could just get each one of those hashes and concatenate them together and then hash them all at once. And you get the same effect. If any of, if any, even like a single bit of data in any of those chunks changed, then this root would change too. But a tree has some special properties. I'm going to try to give you, I think, a couple of little examples so you can see the special properties of a tree, specifically a Merkle tree. So our example is going to be a peer to peer file sharing um, system. It's very simple, just kind of, yeah. Uh, so a trusted source is going to give you a Merkle tree root for a file you want. So what you're going to do is get a whole bunch of chunks of data from totally untrusted people, and then you're going to assemble all that data together, and then you're going to check that Merkle tree root, right? If the Merkle tree root matches, then you know you have the file you wanted, right? Because the only way that Merkle tree root would match would be as if all the data was the same. If the Merkle tree does not match, then you know you've got a problem. In this example, we're going to say that we know what the source of the problem is, and that source is a bad chunk of data. But now the question comes, how do we find out where the bad, where bad data is, right? We had four chunks of data. We know one of them is bad. So with that example of just concatenating them all together and hashing them all together, the worst case scenario in this example that we see right here is you'd have to check every single chunk of data until you got to the very last one, data X, and realized that's the one that's bad. Um, it's, 
so that you can imagine how that's not very good. Like in our system here, it's, it's just fine, really, because, you know, there's only four chunks of data. It's not going to take that long to go through them all. But what happens when there are many, many chunks of data? Um, like I said, some of the Merkle trees will have thousands and thousands of leaves going through those thousands and thousands one at a time. It's going to take a long time. So maybe our little tree can help. So here is our example Merkle tree. So we are looking for the bad data, right? We don't know which one of these little data chunks is bad. And we're going to use a tree to figure it out. The first thing we do is we check the hashes, right? So we know this, the root is incorrect, but we're going to go back and we're going to see what's hash AB correct? It was. If hash AB is correct, then we know that the error is on this side of the tree, right? This side of the tree is perfectly fine. This side is got a problem. So automatically in this example here, we've eliminated about half of the possible possibilities. So now we know this side is going to be broken. So hash um, CX obviously doesn't work. That's not what we wanted. We wanted hash CD. And then we just have to test these two data C and data X. And then we'll see data X was wrong. And that's where the problem was. So you can see how much quicker that would be. Um, each time we travel through a node, our number of possible bad chunks of data is um, cut. Um, so in this example, it's cut in half, but in, if you weren't, this is, um, this is a kind of like a perfect tree. Some trees are gonna be not quite like this, but um, in this example, it is. Um, yes. Yeah, so instead of uh, checking four chunks, we only have to check two. And now suppose we want to um, verify a chunk of data, okay? So, in this example, what we want to do is we want to verify that data B is the correct data we wanted, wanted to get. Well, we actually only need a couple of hashes. We need this hash A and the hash CD, and then we can actually check to see which one's right. That Hopefully this uh, notation won't be too confusing. All we need to verify data B are the hashes at hash A and hash CD. Let's blow it up a little bit more. So. Let's say, so now I made a bigger tree. Hopefully this is, you can still see this on the screen. So if we want to, what we want to do is um, validate data G over here. And these are the hashes that we need. So if we just check these hashes, we'll see, well, this hash is good. This hash is good. Uh oh, we better check these, these ones. So to verify data G with hashes at, yeah, I'm not going to talk about all that. That's going to be too confusing. <laughs> Hopefully this last part with the uh, verification wasn't too confusing. Um, yeah, so now you kind of get an idea of what the Merkle trees are, how they work. Um, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. If you have any comments or questions on the Merkle trees, please leave those in the comments below. I'm kind of experimenting with this Merkle tree video. So if you have any suggestions, um, I would like, I would, I would very much appreciate them. Um, so thank you for watching.